Uh, let me tell you why I'm here, uh, and not why I'm here in my professional capacity, but why I'm here in my personal capacity. Uh, that was my car in 1987, and uh, I thought it was the coolest car in the world, uh, and I still do. Um, even when I worked for other car companies, nothing could be a late 1980s 240 Volvo. And I liked it for some of the reasons that maybe other people didn't. I kind of like that it's a little boxy. I definitely liked that I could drive it like I hated it, that it was a tank. That was actually an old saying in U.S. marketing, drive them like you hate them. So I think when my friend and my former boss, Stefan Jacoby, called me three days into his job and said, I don't understand the brand strategy. And then he sent it to me and I said, I don't understand it either. I'll be there in four days. And I came here as a consultant and I never left. Um, so I'm here now and running marketing at Volvo. And uh, what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about today in three very basic sections is uh, I figure experiences in branding means I should probably talk to you a little bit about brands. Um, my background is I'm a market researcher by background, so I'm particularly passionate about consumer insights. So I'll talk a little bit about people, and then I'll wrap it up with kind of some of the work we've started doing at Volvo Cars. And I recognize some members of my team here who should be home working on those things. <laughs> um, but we'll get to you later. The point I want to make on branding is it is a rational uh, practice, but is it an emotional art? And you have to be good at both of them to make them work. I've seen lots of FMCG companies with their diagrams and charts and graphs, and I'm going to show you some of them. But at the end of the day, it's the document that gets sent to you and you don't understand what's in it. And I've also seen people who start writing advertising taglines right away, and there's no real meat or substance to it, and you need to have both. You know, you want to become one of those symbols such that when people see it and they haven't seen anything else, they automatically register your brand. And Coca-Cola does this very, very well with its iconography. At the same time, you want to have a persona. You want to act as an archetype, like an actor in a film, like someone who shows up again and again, and like, I know who that character is. So you might have a, a mission that says, you know, every athlete in the world, and if you have a body, you're an athlete. So it really has a philosophy or a belief statement about it. So this combination of where you are on your time and growth curve and how you're managing your iconography and your persona are all things that, on a macro scale, you have to use as a brand manager. But the point is, is that you have to really understand what a consumer insight is. You know, a lot of times I, people will come in and say, our insight is, is that food should taste good. And I'm like, well, how much money did you spend on research to learn that? <laughs> because I could have figured that out in 30 seconds. Uh, you got to go a little bit deeper than that. People want a dynamic drive in their car. Yeah, because nobody wants a boring one. Um, so the key to understanding what an insight is, is a behavior you've observed, a need, a conflict in somebody's life, an aspiration that somehow inspires the customer and generally surprises them when it's revealed to them. Oh, how did you figure that out about me? And, and so when you get that deep and you really understand customer behavior, it can become a lot more meaningful. Now these insights can come from the brand itself, from human nature, from the culture you're in, or from the category itself. Preferably something better than beer should be cold. Uh, but, you know, certainly understanding what's a little bit deeper there. I'm going to show you perhaps my favorite insight I've ever seen, which is for um, a campaign in the U.S. for milk. And milk is always sold as healthy, you should drink more of it, it'll keep your bones from breaking, uh, your kids like it and everything. Uh, but what this team did when they studied it was quite simple. The researchers took away people's milk for a week uh, and watched them, and the people went crazy. And so the insight was that people don't really value milk until they run, run out of it. And I now, I travel a lot, so I buy shelf-stable milk, so I always have it at home, so I don't wind up like this kid. But, uh, let's have a look. Mike Proctor is a student at Buckley University, and he's about to participate in a remarkable experiment. 
Heading the research effort, Dr. Iqbal Thiba. Uh, the subject is uh, 24 years old. We are trying to make it very comfortable for him. We have big screen television, uh, video games, stereo, and of course, plenty, plenty of his uh, favorite food. He will live inside this small chamber, cut off from all human contact. In the name of science. Alone. Hey, uh, this one's empty here. Uh, you know? For the next 30 days. <laughs> oh, no, 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 guys. I didn't say after this, guys. I got tons of zero. Okay, it's okay. told us was, was that they were a little bit frustrated by the status quo. That the car was not about me, it was about you. The engineers were about technology for technology's sake. Um, so this led us to a very simple idea. I don't think the video is going to play, so I'm probably going to have to wander out of this and back into something else, which I am going to do right now. And this is why I have a Mac. Everything we do starts with people. It's what makes us different from other car makers. It's why people choose our cars. And it's at the heart of everything we design, engineer, build, and service. Understanding people was our founder's philosophy. And it's more true today than ever before. Volvo cars are designed around you. It's the Scandinavian way. We designed to make things simple. And work better. We give you a contemporary, luxury, experience. Without showing off too much. <coughs> cool on the outside. Warm on the inside. Built to last. They're famously safe. Putting you in command. Bringing out the driver in you. And the fun of the road. We designed to let you see more. To help you hear less. To feel hurt. Protected all around. With world-facing technology. Letting you touch the future. Today. This is why. Your Volvo is designed around you. Kind of cool, huh? A little bit more sophisticated than we've been in the past. Let's make Volvo cool again. Um, so that's what we're working on so far. So that's a little of uh, what we're doing. I can't believe I finished on time. Um, but thanks for your time, and uh, I guess we open it up to questions, but thanks again. In this January, uh, when we were in China, we really see really more robots roaming on the streets. Um, but I bought them all and put them there. <laughs> but, but when we were uh, talking to the taxi drivers, asked them their opinion, they said, oh, who is going to be made in China, we don't want to buy Volvo. So, so how are you going to work it out? Let, let me split the two up. I want to talk about the first issue of the lovers' fires, and then I want to talk about made in China. Uh, first, the lovers' fires. We don't have lovers. We have respecters. <laughs> they really, really like us, but they don't want to go home with us. Uh, <laughs> so, we have a little bit of work to do there, which means to be a little bit hot. Um, so, and, and the point there is, is it's twofold. One is to put some charm and sizzle and emotional quality back in the brand and to state our case more directly. The second issue, China. Um, Audis are made in China, uh, BMWs are made in China, Volkswagens are made in China, in fact more of them are made in China than our car. Yes, it's true, we're owned by a Chinese company. Apple computers are designed in California and made in China and it says so right on the back of the label and they have no problem charging premium price. 
We watch this around the world to determine. But the fact of the matter is all the more reason why we're embracing our Scandinavian roots and really playing them up. Because Volvo was, is, and always will be a Swedish company. And, and, and I think when, when we came in, it was the first thing all of the management team, German, American, Belgian, Chinese, said, respect what got us to what, where we are here. And as long as we keep doing that, I think it'll be okay, as long as we watch and monitor the sentiment that you mentioned. I gotta go find that cab driver. <laughs>